Thank you and good afternoon. And I'll just remark that uh, it is, uh, I'm grateful to be speaking to you today on Earth Day. And we all take a moment to remember the impact that we have on our, our planet. So for today, we have uh, 1,006 new cases diagnosed with COVID-19, uh, bringing the total to 122,757 people who've been diagnosed with COVID-19 in British Columbia. Uh, that includes 241 people in the Vancouver coastal area, 600 people in the Fraser Health region, 37 people in the Vancouver Island Health region, 83 people in Interior Health, and 42 people in the Northern Health region. In addition, we've had three new cases in people who normally live outside of Canada. Um, these are preliminary numbers, and as Minister Dix indicated, we'll be updating uh, the uh, the numbers uh, by the statement this afternoon, including active cases and people under public health monitoring. In addition, though, we have 502 people now in hospital across British Columbia and uh, 161 people who are in critical care or ICU. There's one additional outbreak to report at Mount St. Mary uh, in uh, Island Health, and the uh, additional outbreaks in uh, that leaves us with um, five active outbreaks in long term care and assisted living and seven acute care units. We've had four new deaths reported uh, in the last period, bringing the total number of people who died from COVID 19 to 1,550. As always, these are challenging times to have somebody uh, who passes away from COVID-19 and our thoughts and condolences go to the families and communities and the care providers who've looked after those who've passed away. Um, to date, we've uh, delivered 1,500,430 doses of all three of our COVID-19 vaccines in British Columbia, 88,475 are second doses. And I just want to note for people, whether you're getting your vaccine as part of the age-based program, whether it's part of the worker program or from your local pharmacy, we, also, we still encourage everybody to register on the Get Vaccinated website. This will help streamline uh, your appointments, both for the age-based program, if you haven't had those appointments yet, but will also streamline uh, your getting your second dose. Once you're registered and in the system, um, it makes it much uh, simpler for us to provide you with the information you need when your second dose comes up. All vaccine data is entered into the system, even from pharmacies, although sometimes there's a bit of a delay before that gets into our provincial immunization registry. So we have been very careful from the very beginning that every dose that goes into every person's arm is in our provincial registry so we know when you got it and we know when you're due for your second dose. So for those who have uh, received their vaccine at a pharmacy, there may be a bit of a delay. We encourage you to, to register again um, it, with the Get Vaccinated website. And you may receive both an invite for your second dose from your pharmacy and from uh, the Get Vaccinated program. Today, uh, people 25 years and older are eligible to register for your vaccine so go ahead and do that now and starting tomorrow everybody 18 and over will be eligible to register so i encourage you all to do that it's the most efficient way to get notified of when vaccine is available for your age group and uh, in the good news, we're, by later tonight, we'll be doing bookings for people 60 and over as well through the, uh, the Get Vaccinated program. Tomorrow, the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General will share the details of the additional travel measures that will soon come into effect in British Columbia. We have asked for these additional actions because we know that right now, with the transmission rates we are having, travel will spread the virus further. Staying in our local communities means we are not going to, to and from COVID hotspots and inadvertently bringing the virus along with us. BC, as we know, is a beautiful province with many amazing places to explore. But for now, that means explore your local community, your local area, until it is safe to go further away to other parts of our province. And like all of the orders that we have, 
the intent is to slow the spread and prevent transmission of this virus during this critical time for us all. I also want to talk a little bit about encouraging everybody to get your vaccine when it is available for you. Not only are you protecting yourself, but you are protecting those around you, whether it's at work, the people you live with, your family, and you're giving added protection. It is a benefit for all of us, the more people are protected. There are many reasons for this, but it's important to know that for the vast majority of people, um, we, we, that the age-based program is the most important piece. There is a lot of misinformation that has been circulating out there, and I encourage people to talk to your, your health care provider, but also to go to the BC CDC website where there is um, important updated information routinely on vaccines, about risk of vaccines, what's in the vaccines, and of course the risk of COVID-19. With each person vaccinated, we come closer to returning to our post-pandemic normalcy. It won't be the same as prior to this pandemic, and it will be I mean some changes uh, as we go through the summer, but it is that step closer for all of us. Until then, even if you are vaccinated, we know that this virus continues to circulate it, and all of us need to take our precautions right now. That means keeping to your own household, keeping your distance from everyone else, wearing a mask if you're inside, and if you're even outside, if you're less than two meters away from others. Don't travel unless you need to, not for, vac uh, for vacation or for recreation, and don't travel outside your health authority. Avoid indoor gatherings. Outdoor gatherings are still risky, but they are less risky but stick to your own same small group. We all have to do our part to protect those who are higher risk until we can all be protected with immunization, even if we are not high risk ourselves. So these are the things we all need to do now. Stay local, keep your distance, wear a mask, follow your COVID safety plans in your work at school, and only gather with your own household. And go and get your vaccine when it is your turn. This is what will protect our loved ones, our communities, and each other. And as we have reported over the last few weeks, the number of hospitalizations and people in ICU continues to be alarming and to rise. The pressure on our healthcare system is immense right now, and our healthcare workers need our help. Last year, many people stood at their doors and windows clapping and cheering for our frontline healthcare workers. We knew they were there for us, and when we wanted to show our appreciation, they are still there for us, and have been for the last 15 months. So let's take care of the people who are taking care of us. And this means right now a shared sacrifice, small amounts for all of us to bring us through this storm. And let's remember, of course, that we need to do this by continuing to support each other to be kind, to be calm, and to be safe. Thank you very much, Dr. Henry. And I want to start by expressing my condolences, uh, those of the government, those of everyone in BC, to the four people, uh, to the families, the friends, the caregivers, to the four people who passed away from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, one in Fraser Health, two in Interior Health and one in Vancouver Island Health. It continues to be a very difficult time to grieve and a very challenging time for our province and I want to know all, let all those families know that we are with them in this difficult moment. Uh, Dr. Henry spoke of uh, the number of doses that have been delivered in BC, 1.5 million, 1 million 430 doses, 1 million 411,955 first doses, that's 32.84 percent of those eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine in BC. And uh, I just want to emphasize, as Dr. Henry has done, the need to, to register for everybody, the need to book when you're asked to book. I want to note one group of people, it's a group of people of which I am part, 
uh, who are an important category, the 263,061 people who are clinically vulnerable, uh, who were, have been invited to, um, to uh, uh, book and have their COVID-19 vaccine. This process was led by the Provincial Health Services Authority by Dr. Maureen O'Donnell. I'm happy to report that uh, in, in booked appointments and in vaccinations, um, appro approximately 224,000 of the 263,000 people either have been vaccinated or have booked their appointment. But I would say to the those, and that includes me, I received uh, my vaccination at the Italian Cultural Center last Friday. And everyone in this category, the, the tens of thousands who still need to book uh, their uh, vaccination, I encourage them to do so today. Um, I wanted to give a, an update on acute care and uh, changes that we're proposing in surgery in the province over the next two weeks. On uh, today, yesterday on April 21st, and there's more today, we had 483 people, patients uh, uh, diagnosed with COVID-19 in our acute care hospitals uh, and uh, 7,926 patients uh, who are in hospital with non for non-COVID reasons. On March 21st, those numbers were 303 for COVID reasons and 8,084 for non-COVID reasons, showing the way our hospital system has adjusted for the growth in COVID-19 cases. In critical care, uh, that's 163 people in critical care, as was as of April 21st, uh, and 223 people in critical care for non COVID reasons. Those numbers were 80 and 249 on March the 21st. As we've reported, especially in the last two weeks, over the last month, and especially in the last two weeks, COVID-19 cases in hospitals have been increasing across the lower mainland uh, and indeed across BC, but particularly in our two lower mainland uh, health authorities, Fraser Health and Vancouver Coastal Health. To support care for all patients and the teams that are caring for them, health authorities reduced some non-urgent surgeries in Fraser Health, Vancouver Coastal Health, and Island Health. As well, eight nurses were redeployed from the Provincial Health Services Authority to Fraser Health. In addition, Lower Mainland Health Authorities are asking staff who are specialty trained in critical care and currently working in community settings to return to hospital ICU settings on a voluntary basis. We thank the staff and it has been amazing that have been so willing to support this important work. We said that when we launched surgical renewal, that future waves of COVID-19 could impact surgeries. We also said that we would learn and adapt as we face new, the, each new wave of COVID-19 and that we would manage any reduction of services differently than we did last March. And we're doing just that. Right now, the need to staff surge capacity means that we'll have to reduce some services. We know our hospitals have room, but the surge capacity of staff with healthcare workers from other areas, surgery staff because of the specialty nature of their work. In addition, our critical care and ICU staff are tired. It has been a long, long year and they need some relief. Next week, nine hospitals across the Lower Mainland will move to urgent and emergent surgeries only. This is to ensure that, that they have the critical care staff available to care for patients. We expect that this action will be required for a minimum two week of two weeks, but we're going to evaluate it on a week by week basis. In Fraser Health, this affects non-urgent scheduled surgeries at four hospitals, Abbotsford Regional Hospital, Burnaby Hospital, Surrey Memorial Hospital, and Royal Columbian Hospital. In Vancouver Coastal Health, this affects non-urgent scheduled th surgeries at five hospitals, Lionsgate Hospital, Richmond Hospital, St. Paul's Hospital, UBC, and Vancouver General. Based on how we are performing surgeries over the last several months and the strategies being put in place, we have estimated the, the number of non-urgent surgeries that will not be performed over the next two weeks in both health authorities. In Fraser Health, it is approximately 750 non-urgent scheduled surgeries that will be postponed in a two-week period. In Vancouver Coastal Health, it is approximately 1,000 non-urgent scheduled surgeries that will be postponed in a two-week period. This news is obviously disappointing for some patients and their families because we talk about non-urgent surgeries, but all of these, 
all of them, every one of them, is medically necessary and needed. And uh, we have, but I would say we have shown our ability to meet our ch overcome challenges and get back on track and get the patients the surgeries they need. For those patients that have already been called or will be called to postpone their surgery, and for patients whose surgery we aren't able to book at this time, I make the same assurance we made to patients last March. You will not be forgotten. You are part of our surgical renewal commitment, and as soon as we are, are able to do so, we will call you again and rebook your surgery. That is our commitment to you. And to that key point, here is this week's surgical update. Health authorities verified their data, and this was an Easter week, and reported that 6,061 surgeries were completed from April 5th to April 11th. Uh, that's 4,713 scheduled surgeries and 1,348 unscheduled surgeries. Uh, we break this out by health authorities in that week. That was 1,638 in Fraser Health, 1,175 in Interior Health, 300 in Northern Health, 1,551 in Vancouver Coastal Health, 1,184 in Vancouver Island Health, and 213 in the Provincial Health Services Authority. Finally, I wanted to just acknowledge the extraordinary work that has been done in Northern Health, especially in the last couple of months by our doctors, by our nurses, by our health sciences professionals, by our healthcare workers, everyone in Northern Health. And I'm happy to say that uh, Northern Health has been able to slowly resume some non-urgent scheduled surgeries at the University Hospital of Northern British Columbia in Prince George. It is in part due to an effective vaccine strategy to limit the spread in Northwest BC. As we saw on Monday, we are taking the same community approach in Dawson Creek as well as several other communities across the province. This is excellent news for patients in the North and we should all be encouraged by this development. The third wave underscores, I think, the essential truth of our BC fight. Everyone involved in delivering health care we rely on, everyone involved in delivering the surgeries we need, and everyone involved in our immunization effort, one that has seen 32.8% of those eligible get vaccinated, is counting on every single one of us to stop the spread so that they can do the work that we're relying on them to do to keep us healthy and to make us healthy once again. As Dr. Henry has shown again today and has said again today, we are doing everything that we can to fight the hardest that we can right now to address the COVID-19 pandemic in BC. It's the point in our BC COVID response where we, of course, have to go all in and are all in effort to stop the spread now. It's that that matters most of all.